Well, thank you for uh, attending the moderators meeting tonight. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is first to thank everybody for all the work that you've done throughout the year. I know it's been a lot of work. I'd like to thank all the town employees for their work and for the members of the Warren Committee and other committees in town and selectmen for the services that you provide to our town. We all really appreciate it. What I would like to do tonight is run through the format for the meeting uh, that will be happening on Monday. And let me deal with a couple of uh, particulars first. We will be using clickers again. And uh, many thanks to the Warren, uh, Warren Committee and to the Board of Selectmen authorizing the expenditure. I think it will save us a lot of time in getting through the meeting in one evening. Um, I propose to reduce the time for recording a vote from 20 seconds to 15 seconds. It seemed to me that 20 seconds was a little long last meeting, and it's, it seemed that 15 seconds should suffice, but I wanted to throw it out here to see if there was any reaction one way or the other. Do you think 15 seconds would work well? Okay, so let's go with 15 seconds. Um, the, we'll start with our usual motion um, about anybody who's making an amendment has to provide the source of funding for the amendment. And I think that we may have some amendments coming up with respect to Article 15, some proposed ones. And we've been talking about town, with town council about the form of those amendments so we can uh, deal with that more specifically when we get to Article 15. Uh, we'll then move into um, Article 2, which will deal with the town reports, and uh, which is pretty pro forma. And, uh, Kate will make the motion and Erica will second, uh, if I'm correct on that, Kate. Uh, and then on to Article 2, we'll be asking for $35,000 for the assessors. And again, Erica will make the motion and Andrew Rossetti will be making the second. Article 3 will deal with uh, salaries for elected officials. And Amy Baskin will be making the motion. James Stewart will be second. Seconding, and then I'll be calling through the list. Um, Candace, I forgot. After I make my preliminary remarks, usually it's customary to turn it over to the selection. Will you be making the um, comments on behalf of the selection before we start to deal with the motions? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thanks. Sorry, I forgot to ask about that earlier. Um, article. So Article Three will call through the. Um, the items I'll ask for are polls or questions. If there are any polls or questions, we'll then entertain the questions, have a discussion, and vote on those specific items for which there was a question separately. For those items for which there are no questions or objections, they'll be deemed to be approved after I finish calling through the list of items. Article 4 will then be the operating budget. And Kate, if I understand correctly, Erica will be making uh, the presentation yes, on the budget for the Warren Committee. Okay, and um, uh, Kate, you'll be making the motion, and Gordon Kendra will be making the second. Okay. Uh, capital budget um, uh, will again will be calling through the items. Now, um, who will be making a presentation, if any, with respect to the capital budget? Do, do we want to have a presentation? If so. I don't believe we did last year, right. and um, I think the idea this year is it's a small set of requests, and okay. we can just wait and see if people have questions. Okay, fine. And then if there are questions, direct them to Bob and, yes. and, to, you, and to you also, Kate? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, sorry, Kurt. Oh, sorry, Bob? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, Article 6, uh, we'll be dealing with the Unemployment Compensation Fund, pretty form, uh, pro forma uh, motion. Uh, Brooks will be making the motion, and uh, Fred will be making the second. Um, Article 7 will be to uh, deal with sick leave issues. Again, it's a pretty pro forma item. Uh, Mr. Hamley, Fred will be making the motion, and John Cohn will be seconding. Article 8 um, is, involves a revolving fund for the Recycling Committee. 
Now, at the open committee hearing, uh, at the one committee open hearing, Craig Hughes answered questions, I believe, with respect to that item. Will Craig be the primary spokesperson for this article? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. I write this down and put it in my script. And then that way, if I drop at the podium, Dave Havlin or Peter Smith can step up and just continue without <laughs> a pause. Right now, right now. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Always well, prepared. <laughs> Very good. Um, and the motion will be made by Gordon Tender and will be seconded by Kate Canning. Um, then Article 9 also deals with revolving funds for other departments. Um, <coughs> The uh, motion will be made by James Stewart and will be seconded by uh, Amy Gaskin. If there are any questions with respect to these other revolving funds, who should um, I direct uh, those questions to? Kate, any, any thoughts about it? Would that be Candace or, would, or Dave? Happy to. Okay, maybe I think it would make sense because it's a pretty technical involved. It might be technical as well. Question about what the purposes were some of the various revolving funds. Okay, so. okay, Article 10, Highway, so formal. Uh, Andrew or City will make the motion and um, Eric Hawkins <coughs> will make the second. Article 11, uh, we'll now be getting into the boiler. Uh, issue and um, Eric, well let me ask, um, the, the Warren Committee voted to oppose this. So do we want the uh, Warren Committee member to still be making the motion on behalf of the article or should we ask somebody else to do that? This is, this is an unusual situation. Um, okay. Yes. This it, well, it wasn't unanimous, first of all. Um, it was six to three. Okay. As luck would have it, um, <coughs> the per person who's making the motions is one of the people who voted for okay. it. Okay. Yep. Um, I can switch the person who's seconding to also be one of the other two people. I don't think that would matter as long as okay. it's yeah, second. So, right. But the person who is actually okay. making the right. motion is actually one of the three people. Okay. So as long as people feel comfortable, it's an unusual circumstance that. And uh, Jerry, did, did you well, do I'm just wanted to say that historically, when such a situation that the Water Committee in the majority uh, was against an article, they have typically offered a motion to dismiss, right. followed by um, discussion and um, a counter. If, if that fails, of course, then a discussion on the original. I mean, that's, I'm talking years ago, but that's how. Yeah, this is, uh, okay. This is more complex. Right, right. right. I would rather have this come up on a, mo a positive motion rather than a negative motion. Mm -hmm. Um, because it will save us time, I think, one way or the other. Um, there was also a discussion, just so you'll know, about uh, amendments to this article. And um, the article is drafted fairly narrowly, so it's hard um, to think of an amendment to the article that's not consistent with the exact language of the article that would be within the scope of notice for this article. So um, the discussion led um, to suggestions that amendments that may be made be made under Article 15, which has broader language. And uh, it would at least allow some amendments to be made because of the fact that it's broader in scope. Article 12, um, Board of Health. <coughs> Uh, Jerry, um, uh, Amy Baskin will make the motion. James Stewart will second. Jerry, you'll be making the well, presentation. No, what, what I've set it up is I will have about maybe eight seconds. No. Okay. I'm sorry, no. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm the chair of this committee. Uh, I will have about eight seconds. Okay. I've introduced the primary presenter, okay. who's Carol Chirico, okay. and, and that will flow to uh, our engineer, member of the committee, okay. uh, Ron Meyer, okay. and then we'll go back to questions, if any. Okay, very good. And um, and I know that you've been rehearsing 
a lot to get in under 10 minutes, so we all thank you. Under 10 minutes. Thank you. You know, it's interesting, if you were to go 10 minutes over, and we have 500 attendees at a town meeting, that actually consumes over 80 man hours. No. And uh, we've so, gone back, and back over and So that's why I'm very strict about that. So, so as I said to you, although there are actually now more slides, they are less complex, okay. pithier, and we time each time we've gone through it to get it down. Good. Good. That, that's great. Uh, we will, uh, Dave Hamlin and Peter Smith will be acting as assistant moderators, and uh, one of them will probably be in the cafeteria, and the other will be up on the stage, and they'll be timing. So that they will be holding placards out to guide you. May I ask a question then about sure. that? Much of our presentation is dependent upon the audience being to see, being able to see the slides. Mm -hmm. Well, there will be a camera, a television set in the cafeteria. Let me turn it over to Felicia because she makes those well, arrangements. Then, we've arranged it so that where the cafeteria has the TV, we're going to be putting any overflow voters okay. there. If there are other people overflow who are not voters, we'll ask them to go further down in the cafeteria. Whatever's on the wall there, Jerry, I don't remember the exact dimensions, but we did not get a TV for this one because, frankly, we're hoping to fit everybody in the auditorium. That's the optimal. All right, great, thank you. Okay, Article 13 has been withdrawn. Okay. Uh, you know? We did, this is, we just no, we're just whispering about that because we had a member of college in that. So. Oh, if that was what I was told. It, yes. Our, 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 it, it, was, it was withdrawn. Okay. Um, Article 14 is plastic bags, uh, which is a citizen's petition. Um, Mr. Cohn will make the motion, and uh, Brooks Gurnard will second. Um, is Avery here tonight? Avery, no, your, um, one point to note is that the Moore Committee has not yet voted on this. Okay. We just received some information. Mm -hmm. uh, the intent is to vote at our final meeting before town meeting, okay. which is Sunday morning. So do you feel uncomfortable making a motion then? Do you well, want no, I think we'll, we can make the motion. I just want to point out that we'll probably have a statement. Okay. Read, since there wasn't a statement in the blue book, Okay. Um, I think it might be appropriate at that time to have a member of the committees. Okay, so it, so after the motion is made, I'll turn it over to you to give the report of the Warren Committee. And Avery's not here. Um, I had mentioned to, um, there were two young women who made the presentation, and I mentioned to them and one of their mothers that actually to speak at town meeting, you have to be a registered Dover voter. And uh, the, the woman that I spoke to thought that they were both over 18 although they hadn't registered yet. And I just want to make sure that somebody's able to communicate with them to make sure that they have registered um, so that they will be able to speak at town meeting. Um, um, Jim, there's a difference between registering to vote and being able to vote at town meeting. There's a 20 day hiatus which has right. passed. I can, after this, go to my office and see where we stand with those okay. people. Okay, they have to have registered by a certain date. If they want to vote, yeah. which I would take to maybe, Bill, you might know better, but I'm not sure. They can be a registered voter, but the 20-day hiatus could be an issue. Oh, gee. Well, let, be, let's check it okay. after the meeting. We'll see maybe we don't even have an issue. That would be unfortunate. We, you know, I think it's important that we let them know so that they can uh, have an alternative plan. Person. Because, um, uh, I want, you know, it would, it would be nice if this could be um, an educational experience for them. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't want to see somebody feel And like I can also check on that, but I think we'll start and see where they okay. stand. Yeah, I did mention that to, um, I think it was Avery's mother I spoke to, um, but I think it's important that we follow up on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, Article 15 is the Carroll Community Center, and uh, Brooks Garner will make the motion, and Fred Hammerly will second. And here's where we, uh, and by the way, this is going to be a two-thirds vote because it will involve borrowing. And here's where we get to a discussion of amendments. Um, there have been a couple of amendments that are being uh, considered at this time. 
the uh, article is broader in scope, so it does support, um, if I can turn to the article and read it, It, uh, it states, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, appropriate by transfer from available <coughs> funds, borrow or provide by any combination of these methods, a sum of money for the purpose of improvements to the facilities at the Carroll Community Center, including the cost of architectural and engineering services for plans and specifications related to thereto, or take any other action relative thereto. And a question has come up whether an amendment could be made in the event that uh, this failed, or perhaps as a positive amendment during consideration, uh, that the motions be narrowed to simply making a study with respect to boilers, uh, with respect to replacing bo boilers. And Carol, if I'm not summarizing this correctly, feel free uh, to, to intervene. And my, uh, I told Carol that I would rule that her motion, which has been reviewed by council, uh, to be within the scope of uh, the notice that the article provides because improvements to the facility, in my mind, include improvements to the heating and cooling system and studying those improvements. So I felt that that amendment would be within the scope. There has also been some discussion of an amendment asking for a committee to be formed to study tearing down the Carroll Community Center and replacing it with a new facility. And I have told the person who was considering that that I feel that that's not within my discretion because it's outside the scope of the notice that's provided in the article. Uh, the, in my mind, um, the improvements to the facility would not, re would not involve actually replacing the facility. Uh, unfortunately, um, it may be that we'll have to have a special town meeting then, depending on what happens at this town meeting, to deal with those issues. Uh, I've already presided over three special town meetings, and I'm beginning to find that each special town meeting takes about five years off my life, <laughs> and I'm beginning to count my age in dog years instead of in human years, so I would rather avoid actually a special town meeting, but I feel that uh, based on discussions of council and also looking at the case law myself, that it is not within the scope of the uh, of the warrant article. Yes. You know, sorry, I'm distracted by my able to hear when we got to article 15. Um, I just wanted to quickly explain to folks what. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my thought was that um, as a last resort only. That we did not, for those of us who support um, improving the Carroll Community Center, uh, we did not want to leave the 2018 town meeting with no plan B if both Article 11, if Article 11 failed, and then it was clear that Article 15 was going to fail. Because then we lose the momentum that we had, and we know what happens when we lose the momentum that we had, now we didn't have to go all over it. So if Article 11, so if Article 11 passes, I will certainly not be offering my amendment for Article 15. If Article 11 does not pass, um, then uh, what, my, what my amendment to Article 15 does is at least allow money and a way forward for further action on the heating situation, which is the most critical at the Cattle Community Center. So that's, it's not, it's not automatic if 11 passes and there's no amendment to Article 15. Okay. But if the conversation, if Article 11 does not pass and the conversation in Article 15 seems to enhance, seems that Article 15 as originated would probably fail since it doesn't include anything in the that at least we could leave with something that's been done, okay, from a leadership standpoint to move this forward. Now, Carol, do you want to make that as an amendment to the main motion, or I sent you an email where I discussed there were two alternatives for dealing with this. One alternative would be to make the amendment to the main motion, and then we would move to a discussion of your amendment, vote on the amendment, 
And uh, then if that passed, we would adopt the main motion as amended. Uh, the other alternative would be to wait until Article 15 is voted on, the main motion, and then make a motion for reconsideration. And then in the, uh, if that motion for reconsideration passes, uh, then in the process of reconsidering, reconsidering the main motion, make an amendment at that time. And have you had given any thoughts? I, I did, and there's, there's no idea in that situation. Right. Uh, because um, in order to make the amendment, um, you have to get a reconsideration affirmative vote. Right. Which, who knows? Right. So, um, now, even though that would be the preference, I think, if, you know, the, the town's gonna, if the town votes for Article 15, then there really isn't any need for the amendment. Right, right. Um, but you, you can't rely on, on getting an affirmative on reconsideration right. in order to even get to that. So, uh, to me, the only, the only way of approaching this was to recommend your option one. Mm, okay. You know, for option two. Right. My intent was more to follow what would happen with option two. Right. But I don't know how you, how you worked that. You, I, you know, I, I, would, I'm, I can do it either way, whichever way works best for you. And, and let me just mention that the motion to amend, the approval of a motion to amend is a majority vote, even though the main motion will be a two-thirds vote. And similarly, a motion for reconsideration under our town bylaw that's made within a half hour of the main motion having been acted upon is also a majority vote. And then the motion to amend would be a majority vote. And then the motion to approve the the main motion as amended would be a two-thirds vote. I rehearsed this for 15 minutes in front of a Yeah, sure. But, uh, can I just interrupt? Yeah. I, mean, if, I assume we don't need borrowing if, if it's just the study. No, if so, that would be a two-thirds vote. Oh, it, oh, that's a good point. That's a good point, yeah. So if you're, either way, you won't, your motion won't be a two-thirds. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, is James. there any, excuse me, just, so is there any plans for any amendment? If Article 11 fails, is anybody making an amendment to add the boiler money into Article 15? I mean, otherwise, the Article, Article 15 passes, you're going to do all these improvements with the heating system? Well, it, well, my thinking is is that we wouldn't be approving the controls if we didn't have the boilers. So, if anything, I was going to suggest that we roll the boilers back into Article 15. Well, that's what I just asked. Yeah. I mean, you're not talking about just the cost, you're talking about. So that would be an amendment, right? Yeah, that would be an amendment. Now, would, would your amendment, just to follow up on Bill's point, would your amendment pertain solely to doing the boilers and nothing else? Or, so if you made an amendment before we vote on the main motion, are you simply specifying that boilers will be part of the study and making sure that that's included? Or are you suggesting that the boilers will be in place of anything else that might be done? And you're just about an energy plan. Mine is just an energy plan. Okay, so you just want, so your, 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 your motion would be essentially an alternative rather than doing uh, the main renovation, it would be simply to do uh, a study with respect to the boilers. Well, only if, only if the boilers were not going, if only if the, in other words, only if Article 11 didn't pass. If Article 11 didn't pass. Right. I didn't want to get into the situation that we got into last year with Springdale when there was no plan B when the town voted against it. Right, right. And we were lucky enough to have somebody who right. would stand up and say it. So I don't want right. to leave town meeting. Yep. With, you know, Kathy and I have been working on this for what, 15 or 17 years or whatever it is. I don't want to leave the, the momentum dead, right. okay, and no money to do anything yep. to, to move this forward and to address all the issues that have been up for at least six right. months and have been addressed. Okay. So, that was the intent of my motion. If the selectmen are going to change Article 15, if Article 11 fails, if the selectmen are going to change Article 15 to add $600,000 back in, 
Okay. Is that what you were thinking? That's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. And so then we would be back on the two thirds vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we would be back. Then it would be a four million dollar article that right. would give people an opportunity. That was the opposition from Capitol Warrant was okay. that the controls and boilers were not together. In that case, I would go with with op uh, opportunity two. Right. Which we, this, we if that fails, okay. then sure. we ask for a reconsideration and ask for some money just to right. keep things tight. That's my. That's I my think that thing. makes sense. Um, how, how does the extra funding bill fit in with our uh, initial motion where we require that there be identif identification of the source of funding? You know, the, the uh, traditionally we have our okay, yeah. yeah, that, that's my question. So the, under Article 11, the boilers are covered under free cash. Right. And then would that mean that the 600 would then be under a borrowing? Aspect because the 600, if it goes now to 15, 15 is a borrowing article. So instead of borrowing 3.4, would you be borrowing $4 million? The, the, yes. The, my question is just okay. because we've already, we already discussed how and voted on how to pay for the boilers. And so that would be a difference. Right. Because the borrowing would occur after July 1st, there would be no expenditure impact on fiscal 19's budget. Okay. So the fact that we increased the borrowing to 4.0 million would not require an addition, a, a source of funding for that because it doesn't affect fiscal 19. Okay. But the salad article is with 3.4. No, the ballot is, is silent on the amount. <laughs> it simply specifies amounts to be borrowed to pay for. James, you. So, so um, perhaps others have this question too in the audience. Um, so this amendment for a study, an energy study, um, is there an amount attached to that? Yes, let me, um, and I just got this email. I had sent a draft to Jim, and I just got a response from from Jim and Anita uh, via Dave. Um, and, and, so, and so the question so, is, too, one is there's an energy study that's being talked about. If Article 11 fails, so it would be attached as an amendment to Article 15. And then there's also an amendment, a further amendment to roll in Boilers at 600,000. My amendment would be secondary to the second, amendment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if Article 11 fails and Article 15 fails, mm -hmm. then we would ask for reconsideration from the floor and my amendment would be voted on. Right. So we would vote on the reconsideration. Right. Then if the reconsideration passed, then we would start to consider the main motion. You would make your motion for the amendment. We would debate and vote on your motion to amend. Then we would vote on the main article as amended if the motion to amend passed. So may I just read the amendments? So sure. Okay. So, so as it stands right now, and I haven't gotten back to uh, anybody, but, uh, I move that the town transfer from free cash the sub to whoops, that's not the right one. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 for the purpose of an energy study to determine an appropriate HVAC source and design for the Carroll Community Center under the direction of the Board of Selectmen and further that any findings recommendation from such study as presented or presented to a future town meeting. Well, the intent of this was to get this done for town meeting 2019. So okay. I don't know why that was deleted. So I don't know. You have to. Talk to Nina. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, or pass it through me. I'll send me a question. I'll pass it along. Yeah. As as the guy who always seems to stand up for reconsideration, I, I do have a question on this. The motion to reconsider can that be qualified with a reason, or is it only a motion to reconsider the existing article? And the reason I ask is, given the thirty minute leeway, if Article 15, as established, as printed, fails, a motion to reconsider not otherwise qualified is very likely to face the same opposition because it's not clear to any party why this motion to reconsider and the subsequent intent to offer a, an amendment of significant alteration you follow what I'm saying? Well, I, I think I do, Jerry. Let me let me see if I understand correctly, and then you can help me with this. Um, the person who's making the motion to amend would make the motion, and then if they're if no, that you have to reconsider oh, okay. the failed motion but, but, first. But, but, and the problem you face is that 
if it is a significant failure in terms of count, don't forget, it could have failed and still gotten 50%. Right. Because it was a two-thirds. But if it failed with 60%, for example, then a reconsideration, although it only requires 50%, if it cannot be explained, if there cannot be discussion on the motion to reconsider, and I don't believe you can discuss no, a motion right. to reconsider. You can't debate it. You, as I, I said, in other words, could I say, Mr. Moderator, <laughs> I would like to make a motion to reconsider Article 15 with an amendment to address a more limited study or something like that. I don't know. See, that, that's the problem we, we face. What do you think, Bill? I know it's not debatable. I don't know whether that you are permitted to make the point that Carol's making. And we can we can check and let you know on this. Okay. Well, and to the point also about the the motion to include the boilers. In other words, if, if the first time it fails, and say it fails decidedly then how do we make the amendment? How but the amendment is Article, this is the main motion in Article okay. 15. All right. So it's so not a motion for reconsideration. Okay. Fine. It's only reconsideration if 15 fails. Right. Yes, if you right. debate right. your motion. Right. 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 Okay, fine. Right. Right. So if you follow what I'm saying, is yeah. that yeah. there's this risk that in that 30 minute time period, even if it was, even if Article 15 failed by only 55%, there's the risk that a pure motion to reconsider, not qualified, will once again fail, and that leaves you out. Yeah. Which is why originally I said earlier that I wanted to bring it up. Right. Right. Oh, I didn't want to get into that for just that reason. Yeah. Right. You know, it's always hard for, um, well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, good point, Jerry. Thank you. So if you could let me know that, maybe by, yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm we're going to make it to town meeting Monday, so if I have to prepare something, right. then I'd like to know tomorrow. Possibly. Okay. Thank you. Well, okay, we'll see. Right. Okay. Thank you. Possible. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yes, first. Can we have um, a modified script that would outline where some of these amendments could possibly go on Article 15 so that you know? When we have them finalized, we'll prepare them, distribute them like we always do. Script here, Jim's what I'm talking about, so um, we know what's happening. Well, I, we, I, I mean, I, 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 I could work with, um, is Greer here? Greer will, I'm okay. speaking for Greer, yes. Okay. Uh, we, could, um, we could add some scenarios, but obviously we don't know exactly what's going to happen at town meeting, so we're going to be basically standing on our feet, reacting as it proceeds. Um, and, and obviously there are a lot of variables as to which articles pass and if they don't pass, and making a motion for reconsideration with the timing for that. Um, but, uh, so, but we can give you a general, I mean, for example, I could forward to you the email that I sent to Carol just outlining the two alternatives in general terms about how it would work. And uh, if that would be helpful. Yeah, James. He will provide the amendment. Or who will be provided the amendment? Yeah, that would be nice if we could circulate the amendment to um, the committees beforehand. Um, and actually, it would also be nice if we could have copies made for everybody at town meeting. Uh, I think I think it's always helpful to see the amendment um, for the voters to see it rather than simply be listening to it. Um, I don't know whether that would be possible. We'll do our best. Okay. Um, I know it's a lot of extra work for you fellas, but uh, I, think, I think it's helpful. You know, to the extent I have a bias, it's uh, trying to make sure that as much information is available to the town meeting before they vote. So if something can be in writing ahead of time that they can study, I think that would be very helpful. Okay, good. Okay. After Article 15, we'll be sledding <laughs> <laughs> pretty much um, through the rest of the items, but we do have a couple of other important items to consider. Um, Article 16, we'll be dealing with the Uh 
Yeah, which is a pretty pro forma uh, motion. Mr. Fred Hamley will be making a motion and John Cohen will be seconding. Article 17 is open space and recreation. Uh, again, Gordon Kinder will be making a motion. Kate Cannon will be seconding. Article 18 is kind of a funny motion um, that Dave was trying to explain to me today. Apparently, the Municipal Modernization Act requires that we go back and supplement our prior votes for borrowing. And uh, so this article in the motion is an attempt to comply with the Municipal Modernization Act. And, uh, and if there are any questions that are asked during the consideration of this article, I, uh, Kate, or to Dave, yeah, give it, I'll, I'll turn it over to Dave. Uh, who understands this and was able to explain it to even me very well. Thank you. Article 19 is um, the uh, Regional School Committee uh, uh, request for some, some capital equipment items. Andrew City will be making a motion and Eric Alves will be seconding. Uh, if there are any questions on this, should I turn it over to Mr. Keogh? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Article 20. Uh, will be dismissed. Uh, Eric Wallace will make a motion to dismiss and Andrew Ersetti will second it. Uh, Article 21 is the zoning bylaw. Amy Baskins will make a motion. James Stewart will second. This is a two-thirds vote. And Mark Saro, um, I'll be calling on immediately after the motion is made because statute requires that the planning board make a report to town meeting on bylaw and zoning bylaw amendments. So, uh, and Mr. Sarrow knows that, so um, after the motion's made, I'll be immediately turning to him. Um, <laughs> article 22 is the marijuana article. Uh, Andrew City will make the motion, and uh, Gordon Kendall will second. And um, if there are any questions about this, uh, two people have volunteered to uh, be called upon, Chief McGowan, would like an opportunity if there's any discussion or any questions about this and also Jerry has mentioned. You know, as the board help because I, I sent the select, select persons this a year ago that the nature of three, our Act 336, ballot uh, question four, carefully written, hid the fact that it was actually the legislative body of the town, town meeting, that was obligated to bring forward and either pass or refuse the creation of the marijuana establishment, and that the ballot we passed last year is ineffective before. Okay. I don't think there'll be a lot of discussion. Sorry? I don't think there'll be any No, I don't think so either. I don't think there'll be any, I hope not. <laughs> I don't think there'll be any need for anybody to get up out of their seat. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's no smoking in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> no misting okay. either. <laughs> okay. Um, the reserve fund is Article 23. Um, John Cohn will make the motion and Bert Turner will second. Uh, unpaid bills, Article 24. Um, this requires a four-fifths vote because it's relating back to prior years. Um, and uh, I think there was a little bit of discussion about the third item. It's re reimbursing a father for amounts that he paid for a daughter to take the EMT training course. And the way that it works in the town is that the town will only reimburse you for the EMT training course after you pass EMT certification. And, uh, and it just so happened that this straddled fiscal year so that the reimbursement that's being made to the parent actually uh, uh, dates back to a prior fiscal year and therefore requires town meeting approval. Procedural question. Yeah. I suspect that 11 and 15 are going to engender some discussion. Mm -hmm. And putting this question late into the evening, even though it should be simplistic, requiring an 80% vote puts it at risk, even though it's, you need four fifths and God forbid you don't have a quorum or you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, although we will have the clickers, Jerry. I and, understand that. And I think we, you know, remember we are going to be enforcing the two minute mm -hmm. uh, per speaker, ten minute for the main presenter. So 
I'm expecting that we'll be here. It will be about 10 o'clock or at Article 24. Okay. I was just wondering if it made sense since this is a simplistic article. To yeah, it has. It, last year I did change um, some of the articles because I wanted to be able to judge. And I actually caught a little flack um, for not changing other articles. <laughs> So I really I only want to change the order of articles if there's a compelling reason. And I felt that there was a compelling reason last year because I thought that there was a high probability that we would be going into a second night. And I wanted to be able to make the call after we had considered what I thought were and what I had been advised by other town uh, politically active people were going to be the most controversial items. I, I, I don't think this will be controversial. I feel like I really. Um, oh, I don't think it will be. Yeah. I think it'll just be, be late. <laughs> yeah, it will be late, but I think you know people. It will. It, it, it won't be eleven o'clock. It will not be eleven o'clock, and um, so I think that most people will be here. And as you know, I uh, occasionally will remind the voters that anything can be up for reconsideration, so that they shouldn't leave until I gavel the meeting adjourned. And. Um, okay. So, and, and we've, we've lived to see that many times in the past. Okay, but thank you for the suggestion, thank you. Uh, Article 25 is a supplemental appropriation. Fred Hamilton will make the main motion and John Cohn will second. And then Article 26 is free cash. Um, I've been hearing a little bit of rumbling that this may require some Further discussion at town meeting? We'll be um, discussing free cash in the operating Article 4 mm -hmm. presentation. And then at this point in the meeting, I think it will be important to revisit that topic okay. for a statement by the committee. Um, okay. So that it is some, quite some time on the past during the meeting. Um, also, this amount may be impacted by votes taken during the meeting. Right. How long will the uh, refreshing the recollection of the Attendees take roughly. Take take. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, two Okay, and, who, and will you be doing that? Uh, we'll be doing that on uh, setting that on Sunday. Okay, okay, very good. Okay, I'll let you know. Okay, I'll let you know. That'd be good. Just to moderate, I think at, at that point in time, you have to determine first how many people you have to wake up. Yeah, before right. Before you actually have to determine how many people you right. reintroduce this. Right. I mean, it, I am a little worried about this being controversial. I'm wondering, this might, this would be one that, you know, depending on what you all advise me, is this something that's likely to take a significant amount of time during the meeting? Um, it didn't last year. No. Well, unfortunately, we don't know how much money okay. Warren is going to, if any, is right. going to recommend. I think it's going to be contingent upon the amount of money, certainly, to right. the extent of time. Right. And the feasibility, the use of that money will be something that will be significantly contested, right. depending upon the amounts of what okay. one has in mind. Okay. Okay. There were several speakers in front of the floor last year. Right. So if that's the same issue that no one seems to be raising specifically yeah. tonight, then you would expect some conversation from the floor again. Right. It did go pretty quickly, though. With regards to last year, yeah. after Mr. Stewart's compelling presentation to give back free cash. Most people were asleep when it came time for the rebuttal of giving back free cash because it happened sometime after 11 o'clock. So it sounds like just like my closing arguments. <laughs> 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 I, I think that um, you, you did a solid presentation last year. We are, we've been having multiple conversations. Um, we're in a little bit of a challenge because of scheduling. Right. Um, this is not a vote that we want to take unless our entire committee is available. And there have been challenges with travel schedules, so we'll be doing that on Sunday. Okay. Um, we will be concise, but uh, unfortunately this is a topic that can't be talked about right. until late in the meeting because it is impacted so by other right. votes. It's a, it's a point of failure, so, so, right, okay. All right, very good, thank you. And then uh, Article 27 will be dismissed uh, by James Stewart will make a motion and Amy Baskin will second. And then uh, Kate will make a motion to dissolve the meeting. And mm -hmm. hopefully it will be before 11 o'clock when we do that. <laughs> you notice that the need that's signed by the need of transfer station says town meeting starts. Yeah, right. <laughs> May 7th, 7 p.m. <laughs>
I, 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 go, I belong to the moderators that serve for Massachusetts, and there are some towns that they have town meetings seven days. Seven days. Wellesley spread into two weeks. Yeah, right this year. So I, I think the reason that I'm trying to um, control the time is that, one, I think that people's attention spans are, uh, it, it's an it's a evening, they've worked all day, and um, I think that they feel like they really want to move on the items uh, fairly quickly after there's been you know, adequate discussion. And it puts a burden on us, the speakers, because we have to try to distill our message to a very succinct statement. And uh, a friend of mine who's an author once said that uh, it's easy to write a 500-page novel. It's very difficult to write a 250-page novel. And I think that carries through to a lot of things that we do in communication. So, um, you know, think about how you're going to be uh, presenting your argument. Try to distill it to two or three points. Most of the studies show that people won't remember more than two or three points that you're making anyway. You watch the, the best advocates and they're usually making no more than three points. Um, and if we can do that, hopefully we'll be able to get out at a reasonable hour and, uh, and we'll be able to do it in one meeting. I know that the townspeople really appreciate it when we do that. Yes, So Kathy. could I um, ask how, how you might be intending to have people say, I, I heard that you might, we might not be having the Boy Scouts doing mics down the aisles? Or yeah, we're going to do both. Um, Felicia and I have been talking about this. And we'll set up the two microphones down at the bottom of the aisles so that people will queue up. And in addition, um, having just had back surgery myself a year and a half ago, I'm sensitive to the fact that some people may not want to stand. So people who don't want to stand, uh, they can raise their hand. And what I will try to do is prorate calling on people who are raising their hands from the seat versus people who are at the microphones based on the relative numbers. So for example, if there are uh, 10 people queued up and two people who are raising their hand from the seats, one out of five people that I call on will be seated. And I think that's the only fair way for me to do that because I think it's difficult to ask people who aren't able to stand in line to, uh, to do that. And I want to make sure that they're heard as well. So another question um, is in the past, and this may be fairly distant past, um, people who wanted to be able to speak to an article but weren't the main presenter um, identified themselves to the moderator, or the moderator was usually asking for that and wanting to know where that person right. was, so that just and, and be able to re, um, recognize those people before somebody that you don't know raises their hand to know the Yeah, that's a good point, Kathy. Um, I did see that. It's in the end, it went somewhere on our, our, our um, web page, it does mention that. And um, I'm going to have to think about how I'm going to coordinate that um, with people queuing up. Um, it's only happened once in, in my eight years um, that uh, somebody on one of the articles approached me and wanted to make sure that I would call on him. Uh, so it's not very frequent, but if it does happen, I should have a plan in place that's fair to deal with that. If you have any ideas about what would be a fair way to deal with that. I appreciate your comments. Yeah, Tom. Jim, uh, how would you handle that if uh, only in the crowd calls a question and you've got a lineup of people? Do you have any control over that? I don't. I mean, and, and, and calling a question is not debatable. Right. Uh, so if it happens that somebody is seated, and, they're, and when I'm calling on them proportionally, this happened at last time. <coughs> At that point, that's it. Um, I, I don't have. I don't believe I have the discretion to postpone a consideration of a motion calling a question. Does that encourage or discourage people from getting in line? Well, we have to use the honor system. I mean, if some, you know, at the beginning of this meeting, I do explain that we, or I did last time. We only did this for the first time last time. I do explain that uh, I prefer that people queue up, but if you're unable to stand in line, I will be calling proportionally on people sitting. 
It's it's um, it's an honor system. I can't. I'm certainly not going to try to. <coughs> somebody in the line call the question. If they're if they're turn to speak, absolutely. What if it's not their turn? Then they're they're not recognized. You mean you won't recognize? I won't recognize them. I, as, as by the way, as Tom, as you know, I don't recognize people yelling on the turn from the floor either. <laughs> but if, it, if somebody out in the crowd wants to call the question, yep. then you're going to have to recognize them. You're not going to let them shout it out. No, absolutely not. I, I, it, um, I believe we'll have to look at the game films for this, but I don't believe that I've ever allowed a motion that was shouted out from the floor before they were recognized. But we'll have to confirm that in the films. All right. At least I, I try not to do that because that encourages chaos. You know, um, my role is to make sure that people are heard, that there's a reasoned, uh, polite, but sometimes pointed discussion of the issues because that enables people to make a, a, a good decision and is to maintain order. And if somebody's calling a motion out of order, I am going to deal with it as it is out of order. And I will not entertain it. And um, if push comes to shove, just so I, I've never used this authority, but under state statute, I actually have the authority to direct Chief McCowan to remove somebody from town meeting if they're acting in a disorderly way, which includes disobeying my That's only happened my once in 50 years. I know, I know. I heard, I heard about it. I hope that I never have to exercise it, but that is my ultimate tool if I do. Well, I have one more question. Sure. If you recognize somebody in the line, and yep. that person has an opportunity to speak, right? can he or she then call the question after he finishes speaking? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so. So they would be the last person heard, and then they would call the question. I think, Mr. Moderator, the two words that you used last year that were extremely effective were new and pertinent information right, right. that you would recognize right. speakers who had right. those two things. So right. I thought that was extremely well yeah. done. And that applies to, to facts as well as perspectives. Yeah. New and pertinent facts, new and pertinent perspectives. And, um, you know, I, 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 in my opening remarks, I mentioned this. If people keep hearing the same thing, sometimes there's a pushback. Right. You know, some of the studies suggest that people start to react negatively to that and actually start to push back because they feel like they're cramming it down their throat. So um, it, it actually doesn't pay to keep repeating the same thing uh, <coughs> over and over again. And, uh, but. But you know, it's, um, the good news is I think that we have a very well-behaved citizenry and, um, and people are generally of very good faith and goodwill, so I don't anticipate that I'll have any problems. I think your discretion with what Mr. Crowley spoke to, with the fine line between something that's there for the sake of being there and something that's relevant, right. I think your discretion has always been, in my opinion, well, thank you. Thanks. We try. I've had some great predecessors who trained me well. So. Yes, great. Oh, thank you. Uh, we're going to need PowerPoint presentations by 1 o'clock tomorrow uh, to Bill so that he can compile them. And, and then he's going to be emailing them to me as well so that I, I can review them as well. Um, so if you could uh, get, the, get the PowerPoints in by tomorrow at 1, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, what happens is uh, Bill ends up working a lot of extra time over the weekend trying to get every, everything prepared. Now, I know the Warren Committee may not be able to do that, and that's fine. We expect that you might be late. Uh, I, I was going to send him a draft. Right. So he could do a placeholder. OK, great. The understanding that I will send him Good. a final version as soon as it's finalized. That's so always no. very thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Moderator, given that we don't have the final wording yep, that's for fine. my amendment, yep. I will have to get that to Bill right. on Monday once you get the words right. on the one slide. Yeah, I, you know, I think that I would actually recommend that um, you actually have a handout. I would do that too. But yeah. I would also like to have 
because I, I, I think that it's better, you know, that people look at it during the meeting, whereas with a slide, they only see it. No, I'll go ahead and too, but it also should be up there. Right, okay. Okay, good. Any, any other questions or suggestions? Um, okay, well, again, thank you very much. I know you devote a lot of time to this, and uh, greatly appreciate all your work. Thank you. Thank you. So with that new information, I thought I would bring that to the board and say if, if there's anything additional you'd like to discuss, we can certainly discuss it, or if you're ready to just take a vote, I feel as though we owe, it is, this is our article, and I think that we owe the voters our position on Article 15. Do either of you have anything further you'd like to say about it? Well, I'm, I'm going to explain my vote. Um, because um, I have spent a lot of time um, deliberating and thinking about, you know, what's best for the town of Dover and the citizens of Dover. Um, as you all know, I'm a representative of the Board of Selectmen on capital budgets. Um, and we spent a lot of time um, looking at both Article 11 and Article 15. Initially, we looked at them together before they were broken out. Um, Based upon, um, you know, my attendance at the open hearings um, and reading and refreshing myself on all the information that has been out there and all the work that's been done for many years, I'm inclined to, um, to vote for pausing and taking a step back and having the town look at really not whether or not to have a community center, because that vote has already been taken. We have a community center. You know, we all utilize the Carroll School. But I think it would be um, beneficial for us to present to the town, you know, some three options, basically. Continue out the course that we're taking, which is the $3.4 million for controls and a new heating system. I heard a lot of questions and interest in uh, trying to understand what it would cost to do what I call a renovation plus. Um, you know, the Carroll Community Center is in the center of town. It's the heart of Dover. It dictates, in my opinion, the character of Dover. And I think there is somewhat of an appetite to understand how much more citizens would need to spend to do this renovation plus. 
which is to update the space both inside and outside. And then, although I'm not particularly in favor of this, but I believe we owe, owe it to the citizens to look at it, is what, what would it cost to have a smaller building, a new building, and tear down this building? And, you know, so again, I want to emphasize, I am very much in favor of the community center. I am very much in favor of a place for, for both the community and the extra town um, departments. Um, I think I would like to see a building that will be good for the next 50 years that focuses on the right kind of space for the programs that we have today and programs in the future. And because of that, I am not voting against Carol, but I am voting to pause, take a step back, and do it right. So is that a no? It's a no vote. Okay. John? So, <coughs> excuse me, Madam Chair. Um, I agree with a lot of the things that uh, Mrs. Hunter said, and I agree with the, the, some of the ways that um, she's framed the, the argument in her vote. Let me give you sort of the other side of, uh, in, in my vote is, I'll try to do it as quickly as possible. Um, I'm also, like Mrs. Hunter, in favor of the, the building. I think we, it's a great asset. The building has been standing for 90 years. The building has been, uh, there's, th there's been two different additions made to it. There's part of this that's an ongoing use. It's an ongoing asset. And I think it's a building that will evolve as it has evolved over the past 90 years. So in the scope of what our job is, I take a more black and white view of what the role of the selectmen should be with regards to this article as the article is written. So as the article is written and as the article states, I am in favor of the article and I am in support of the article. So I think that the article gives us the ability from a feasibility standpoint to look at all of the things, all of the concerns that Mrs. Hunter has brought to our attention tonight. So. I am relying on the scope and the work that has been done, how we got here to this point. It's been a 16 year process to get from when we took over the building to, to this part. So I don't think that it's going to change what we do and how we do it, the methodology of how we do it. So I am in support of the amendment and I also think we're going to hear a lot of debate at the town meeting. I'm hoping to be here for a lot of debate. So I'm in favor of the, the amendment and I'm going to vote in favor of, uh, I'm sorry, the article. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Professor Clark, mm -hmm. in favor of the article. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. I appreciate that. Um, I would, um, and I'm all in. I am a firm believer in the value of the Carroll Community Center. I think it is, as you said, a true asset for our community. I think the fact that it was given to us and that we have followed the wish of the people to do the maintenance and to keep the building functional, I think is to everyone's credit. I also respect, respect the fact that we have come to the end of a 17-year maintenance plan and these, these last four components, the boilers, the controls, the ADA co uh, compliance improvements, and also the electricals and hallway work, all of this has been carefully planned out and it was rolled together for cost-saving reasons. And so I'm in very much in favor of that, not only the boilers, of course, that was Article 11, but the rest of Article 15, I'm all in favor. And to Mrs. Hunter's point about the maintenance plus, I think it's an interesting concept. Renovation plus. Renovation plus. I think it's a very interesting concept because passing Article 15 provides for that. We, we do the maintenance, and then you can talk about the plus. Right. So in other words, in support of, of the improvements plus or renovations plus, I would, I would support, fully support Article 15 and um, think that yes, indeed, then it's time to look at what are the other improvements we want to see to make the building specific to the users and to enhance the spaces for everyone. So that's a yes for me. So our vote on 15 is two in favor and one opposed. So we'd like to go forward with that and that's important information for town meeting. 
So thank you both very much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to vote to authorize the expenditure of that Massachusetts Department of Public Health Funds. And what I am going to share is a, a note from Peter McGowan, our police chief. As requested, I have reviewed the grant acceptance expenditure request from the Board of Health with Chief Hughes. I would recommend that you approve the request with the provision that the company and person selected to perform the development and or revisions of the Board of Health emergency plan be required to meet with Chief Hughes and myself prior to the completion of any action plan recommendations. Additionally, we will ensure that any plans created or revised comply with the Town of Dover's existing emergency management <coughs> protocols as detailed in the attached memo from 2012. So this is an opportunity for us to approve the um, Department of Public Health funds for training. Any questions? No, I have no questions. Chairman, uh, I think the Board of Health has an opinion on all of this. I, yes. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. I don't think it will change your vote, but this is a difficult issue. Uh, I have a lengthy script that was written by the various members of the board. What has transpired in the last two years has, in some cases, almost prevented the board from doing its work. I point out to you that all of the grants we're talking about, whether it is this grant, or previous grants clearly spell out that they are health related. The funding entities, whether it is the Federal Health and Human Services Secretary, whether it is Massachusetts Department of Public Health, or its agency, Cambridge Health Alliance. These are all monies restricted as to use by federal law or state law to health only. Okay. May I just, I, I appreciate that, but I, I'm happy to have this conversation offline. We're actually in, in the position to approve the funds. I understand that, but the Board of Health has severe problems with the memorandum you just read. All right. I think we should probably have this conversation offline because we're in the business of now wanting to approve the funds for you. I, I fully understand that. So I think but, that we but probably the problem should we do have that. is it has taken us four months to reach this point on only this last supplementary approval of a grant that was given almost a year ago. We are in arrears on expenditures. But we have to approve this and that's what we're ready to but, do. But it's in this lengthy period because of the involvement of parties who have nothing to do with health matters or the expenditure of these funds and legally have no say in the expenditure of those funds. Well, I, I, I understand your point and I promise you that this is a conversation that can be had, but this harkens back to six years ago that indeed the emergency management <coughs> plans for the town were established. We just would like to approve the funds for you to avail yourselves of the training. This is unfortunately hanging up on the words that are involved, emergency planning. Under Executive Order 569 that the Governor signed in September of 2016 and arising out of EO 569, there has been a plethora of activity by the state government since January of this year, with many grants now being brought forward for health related, having nothing to do with anything else except health, having no players in the discussion except health. And we've been delayed in processing this most recent grant by over four months now and previously by three months in 2017. I will tell you very frankly, we were considering applying for a $75,000 maximum grant that was brought out under EO 569 in mid-April unfortunately with a fast deadline in mid-May. And we were considering working very diligently to apply for this, and we have decided not to, because we know that if we were faced with the same process as we've had to go through this year, 
and the previous year, there is no possible way we could work to that grant. All right, I thank you very much. And as I said, I think this is a conversation that we can have. Uh, what we're, we, what we would like to do is approve these funds for you. So that's what I'm going to open it up to the floor. If there are any questions or concerns, anything you'd like? No. No, no I don't. I don't see any. I don't see any. I don't see any latitude at all for debate. It's right. just simply a matter for us to approve them. Well, oh, I'm not differing with you, but I, what I'm saying to you is the process that we've been suffering this fiscal year have been up to four months delay in being able to move forward with certain tasks. I, I, Jerry, I, I thank you. And I think as, as Madam Chair has stated, your point is well taken. But it's not germane to the vote that we have with regards to these funds. I hear you. This is my only opportunity officially to bring it forward in an open meeting before the Board of Selectmen. I can't talk to you privately. Right, and I appreciate that. Um, my understanding is that we have moved as quickly as we can through the proper channels to get us to this point where indeed we can vote on this. And it, it does come back to our protocols around emergency management. The, so the difficulty is what the federal government and what the Massachusetts Department of Public Health in both instances in talking about emergency is not talking about the same emergency that you're in. And that's the difficulty. It's an unfortunate choice of words by the federal government, by the Massachusetts Department of Health. That's the difficulty. It is something totally different from the emergency management you're talking about. Julie noted. Good to know. So I would take a motion. I would move, Madam Chair, that we approve the, uh, the Board of Health grant as applied. I have one other item. Second. 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 Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yes, sir. Madam Chair, I have one other item to bring before you that is coincident with this. It is good news, we hope. For the last Thanks, several months, we have been working with both Senator Rush's office and with Representative Garland's office. You may remember that last year we did get a slot into the state budget, but it was a so-called outside item. Uh, it had no support in it because, quite honestly, we got to it late following on Sherborne's action. This year we did considerable preparation. You can read this letter from Representative Garland. As you read it, you can see the second and third paragraphs are absolutely focused on Executive Order 569 and clearly enunciate that this is a health issue related budget item if it is not, once again, not funded by the government. But it is in the House budget. We will be, we hope, expect it to be in the Senate budget. And lacking a rejection by the governor, we would hope it receive these funds in fiscal 19. Is this the same channel that you went through with the um, first uh, plug that you hoped to have in the budget that was? As I said, with last year we did it quick in a hurry only because we, I came into it very late in the discussion, as you understand. And I did not have the material that I thought was necessary to support the budget request. This year we went in full-blown, lots of documentation, explanation, as you can read. And again, unless the governor chooses not to fund outside land items, right. our expectation should be to receive these funds. And this time, on the basis of fully supported our, our request. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank you. I can only echo Madam Chairman's thanks to you for this. Can I just point out one thing? This is not my letter. This is Representative Carter's letter. So there's a spelling error. I will withdraw my hopes. I, emergency operations management. I understand. Emergency operations Minutes. I fully understand the problem that the words have. 
But if you find them, Sister Nathan in third grade. <laughs> Emergency <laughs> operations <laughs> management. Yes. Uh, for example, we're constrained. You can't go further than what we are. Well, the problem is I don't think these two other departments, the two chiefs, have anything to do with tick-borne diseases, <coughs> with Zika. Shall I go on? And for them to miss meetings over and over again and hold us up for four months most recently. We voted to spend these monies in February, and here we are in May. I hear that, but at the same time, I think we owe a great, great debt of gratitude to both chiefs because they are very much supporting this grant and your use of this grant. So I'm not different with their, their, their positive action. Okay. I'm saying to you the process has we knew that we were reaching the end where we were back to return those money. I hear you. All right, well, thank you very much. Glad that we could handle this tonight. The next item on the agenda is to execute the Massachusetts Interagency Mutual Aid Agreement. Would you like to speak to that, please? C certainly, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Dover has um, mutual aid agreements with all the surrounding towns except Sherbert and Natick. Mm -hmm. This is simply requesting that the town, that this Board of Selectmen execute the mutual aid agreements for those two towns. Are there any questions from the floor? Okay. I would take a motion. Sure, I'll make a motion to accept the mutual aid agreement to include Sherborne and Natick. Second. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next item, Mr. Ramsey, you can speak to, or I'm happy to, whichever you'd like, uh, to vote to authorize the chair to execute the community compact documents. You had the whole history with the state over this. Madam Chair, members of the board, so back in March, we, we spoke to the board and introduced the subject of the community compact. Um, Governor Baker's administration <coughs> rolled this initiative out. Essentially, it's a grant program tailored to municipalities that's been offered for several years. Mm -hmm. Um, the governor's office approached us about a month ago and said, you guys haven't signed on yet. We had been working to develop this, this new software application for um, the accounting office, the assessors, and the treasurers that would upgrade the software and create a, a more interactive software for the three departments. They have finalized their work. It has meshed very nicely with the community compact. The governor has agreed to award the town $25,000 for this purpose. It's a total of about $49,000 to be implemented in fiscal 19, effective July 1st, 2020, if everything goes right. That's wonderful. Any questions? No. It's a wonderful thing for our town. Um, I a motion? Motion. Absolutely, take a motion. Move, Madam Chair, that we accept. You have to get the actual number. Or to authorize you to sign by authorize you to sign in for uh, on behalf of the town of Dover in the acceptance of this. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And I look forward to doing that. It's a very nice thing for our town. And who got would you like to speak to the performance appraisal? Sure. Thank yeah. you. Uh, time really flies. Once again, it's time for performance appraisals. We've had another great year with our employees, and um, every May we ask the board if we can uh, perform, uh, per uh, conduct performance appraisals. Department heads prepare them uh, for their employees, and the department heads are also um, appraised, and although they're ongoing dialogues during the year, this is a really sort of a, a snapshot looking back at the year, uh, what the person accomplished, uh, shortcomings there might have been, and goal setting for the coming year. It's a great opportunity to have a 
very focused dialogue with each individual and to thank them where it's appropriate. Right. So we're asking that you allow us to commence that process. Wonderful. Any questions? No. Well, it's, it's mostly thank yous. Right, okay. I can imagine. So it's a process that you look forward to. Yes, we do, and it really, it just helps us to um, all sort of really focus on the particulars. Pat, what, what was accomplished, what we hope to accomplish, what we're moving forward with in the coming year, so everyone is clear on the expectations. That's right. Do you, do you do quarterly updates, or...? Semi no, what I, what, I, what we encourage people to do is to have ongoing dialogue with their employees. What what we've told them when they're hired, and, what, and their department had to sit in the orientation is there should never be really any surprises. There might be um, one small particular item, but on the whole, your department head should never come in there and say, you know what, this quarter has been a problem because if there have been problems, they should be having ongoing dialogue with those employees and there never should be surprises. So people really know where they stand during the course of the year, I think. Yeah. It's wonderful. And it's a, it's a great opportunity to codify the good, as you said. To, That's right. Yeah, it is. And, and um, also step increases mm -hmm. for people who are on the step increment plan are uh, contingent upon satisfactory performance mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but it's a really um, interesting thing, is 360 <coughs> degree evaluations. So you ask your employees to give you feedback about, you know, what you could improve on. And it's, it's really enlightening. Yeah. It's, it's is like, it, a, yeah. So, yeah, so you know, they, you, you just say, you know, are there things, as part of the review process, are there things that I do that you think I could do better, or are there things I do I think that, 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 that goes on during the appraisal. It's, it's really sort of a two-way street, saying this is what, you know, you accomplished, and then they'll say, well, you know, I think you need to be more communicative with me on this. I didn't realize that you wanted this started early or, you know, in terms of prioritization. You know, I thought this was the priority, not that, and you need to be clearer next time. You know, we really do have pretty frank dialogues. Great. Yeah. The back and forth is wonderful. It is. Yeah. Yep. It is. And because we're a uh, small town, mm -hmm. Few employees, there's a lot of conversation that goes on all the time. And it's hard to, it's hard to avoid each other, Mona. That's right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mona wishes you <laughs> potato chips and ice cream. <laughs> That's right. We'll do that soon. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Right. Thank okay, you very so much. I would you. move that we authorize Mrs. Kugach and Dover to ask of the department heads that they conduct the performance appraisals. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So the next on item on the agenda is to review the account receivables write-offs. Mr. Ramsey? This is the ambulance outstanding bills, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Some years ago, one of the selectmen noticed that in our financials there was a large sum of uncollectible money for ambulance. We just hadn't been keeping up with the housekeeping in terms of write-offs. So we committed to the board at that time that every year we bring to you any accounts that were uncollectible after two and a half years that had gone through this exhaustive process, billing, billing, phone calls, et cetera. So this is that annual process, a total I think it's about $7,000 in uncollectible bills. And I really admire that because it really becomes so cost prohibitive to keep being involved trying to chase down after so many years. So I, I think this is a wonderful idea. Right. Any other questions? So just like, I don't remember, how does this compare in total to the <coughs> amounts from prior years? Pretty much the same. Okay. Might be a little bit more than last year, but it's, it's always in that single digit thousands. Mm -hmm. It seems to be pretty consistent that on average it's about $500 per, per event of uncollected. And you bring it forward after three, four years. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Excellent. Very good. I would take a motion. So I'll make a motion to to authorize the, I guess it's the town accountant, to write off $7,787.97 of um, uncollectible receivables 
in connection with ambulance. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Other business. We have a notice from Chief Hughes. Uh, this is about the pavement markings bid. The bidding the bids for pavement markings were open. I'm asking your approval to award the bid to low bidder highway safety systems for $39,710. Um, the low bid from the last year was $36,460, so another 10% slide almost. Um, any questions? No questions from me. I move that we accept the, bid, the low bid of $39,710 from Highway Mark. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the bids for catch basin cleaning were open. I'm asking your approval to award the bid to the lowest bidder, BNC Corporation, uh, for $24.66 per basin for a total of $52,871.04. Uh, that is. Um, actually a little lower than last year's at 56,451. So thank you BMC for bringing an even a lower bid. <coughs> nice. Very nice. Same, uh, Madam Chair, I move that we accept the low bid from BMC Corporation for the catch basin cleaning. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I noticed Pinehurst, Massachusetts. I'm not sure I know where Pinehurst is. Don't know. Sounds like it might be down close to the Cape. I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Not a town you've gone to? Okay. Not one of the few. Right. Three years. Right. Okay. It could be a section of the town, like the Chichewit is part of Wayland. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good. That's, that's a good point. Hey, Darren, part of Dartmouth. Yep. Yeah. Right. And I always think about pine barrens and out close to the water. You know, mm -hmm. so you get into the scrub pines. Yes. Yeah. Might be. Yeah. Excellent. So. Oh, this is, would you like yeah, to I would love to speak to this Madam Chair. So there's two things that I must for, uh, first point out and thank you to Mrs. Deshino with regards to the preparation of this. The, um, I was tasked with, last year, uh, in years past, we have written a request to the Chief prior to me being a selectman and, and the request is always a letter. And then once it got here to us, it became in the form of a memorandum. So I assumed at some place in time between the chief's desk and your desk, it turned into a form. So I went in search of the form. And there was no form in our office, there's no form in the clerk's office, there's no form in the chief's office. It's just a letter the chief receives. So we are asking once again, it's the it's a charity event. Uh, it's going to be held in the second week of September. Um, it's going to it, the event is called the Pullport Team Time Trial. It's uh, an event that brings about 130 cyclists and enthusiasts into the town of Dover. We run a charity event in the morning, and the proceeds go to two local charities. So it's a wonderful event. There's men and women of all ages now, from literally from high school, uh, high school kids to um, uh, we had a 73-year-old last year <laughs> competing. Cool. So. Um, it's a lot of fun, and we're doing it. We we did it in coordination with a conversation with Parks and Recs, with with the, with the police department, with Officer Harry, with um, the the uh, the team on the weekends to have the time where we mitigated all of the traffic risks. Mm -hmm. So Wonderful. we we went on a different day than the Dover days, and there's also a an event with regards to the school, the Charles River School. We picked the opposite days oh, of that excellent. as well. So, so you should have. An easier time at the center of town. Exactly. Wonderful. The intent was to make it as simple and as mitigate all the traffic with regards to both Charles River School, the town, anything happening at the Legion, and anything happening in the town. So. And if I remember from last year, the competition is fierce. It's fierce. It's oh, fierce. Oh, this is a very serious group of men and women. Right who are training throughout the year for, the, for, for this the event. And time trial. The, for the Pole Port team time trial. Team, team time trial. Teams of six riding team through the town of Dover. So I am very happy to, to announce this event, to announce to the board that the chief, we have the chief's 
uh, approval and Parks and Rec's approval and consideration by both the town boards and by Charles Moore Schools. Excellent. And what's the significance of starting at 606? Because it's a six person team time trial. <laughs> okay. So we go off at 606. Yeah. yeah. And the sun rises at 606. that day okay. at 606. Coincident. Coincident. <laughs> or it did last year anyway. So we'll do about the same this year. So I would move that we accept the opportunity to have the event in the town of Dover once again this year. The eighth annual. Uh, I just noticed I was going to say eight year in a row. Eighth year in a row. Can you yeah. take a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, uh, best wishes with this Oh, well, thank you very much. So, Thank you very much. And this leads right into very good another segue. important part of the meeting. Um, probably the meeting that gets the part of the meeting gets the highest ratings at home. On <laughs> oh, I imagine people are calling. Come see Top ten. We get top ten. Even Kate has stayed oh, no. for this part of the meeting. <laughs> 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 see, uh, she gets invited. I'm convinced I, oh, Mrs. Yes. Kenny gets invited. <laughs> May 1st, retroactively, Harvard Consulting the Group. Tell me, be at one of these places when we need a special liquor license. Yeah. Uh, a Harvard Consulting Group end of semester event at Elm Bank Rotary Club fundraiser on May 3rd. The Taste of Wellesley, several vendors, Elm Bank. Lots of fun. Uh, May 5th. Elm Bank wedding, May 6th birthday party at Elm Bank, May 19th wedding at Elm Bank, May 21st corporate outing Elm Bank, May 28th graduation party, Powisset Lodge, June 2nd a bar mitzvah at Hale Reservation, June 2nd Dover Music Festival at the Legion, which is a must attend. Mr. Ramsey, Ms. Fugash. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the one that caught the eye of Mrs. Hunter. June 15th, 16th, and 17th. The tra is this the beer gardens? The beer gardens, Mrs. Hunter? I, I have no idea. I'm you have no idea. If I like beer it gardens. on the 15th, I might go on the 16th. <laughs> if I like it on the 16th, I may go back on the 17th. A three day yeah, traveling beer gardens. There. <laughs> At Powisset Farm. And July 15th, the 2018 Crush Festival, Massachusetts Farm Wineries and Groves. That sounds like something we should have a corporate outing at. <laughs> that should be barefoot. That reminds me of a Lucy show, of Crushing the Grapes. So, Madam Chair, I submit to you the request for one day liquor licenses in conjunction with our Chief of Police. Excellent. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I have a question for you both, uh, all of us here. A uh, Poisson Lodge, uh, is that one of the buildings in Hale, or is that the name? It is. It is. It is. It is. Okay. Okay. There's some Hale. Camp. Right. Oh, right. 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 It's the beautiful one right overlooking uh, Noannet Pond, I think. I'm not sure uh -huh. if it is. Right. Is it? I think it's lovely, but it's interesting to share the name, you know, with yeah. Boys at Farm. So I just was curious. Thank you very much. Excellent. Well, we are moving right along. I'd like to thank you again, Mrs. Chilo, for a beautiful minute. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And do you have any questions? No, so they were. Jeffrey's any? No, the reading. I haven't read through the minutes. I move that we accept the minutes of April 12th, 2018. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. And are there any citizens' comments? Mrs. Canning? No, just remember to bring the blue book to town meeting. That's right. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Very, very well done. Sorry, that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anything else for the good no. of the order? Town meeting. Town Hello. meeting. Again, everyone, town meeting Monday night, May 7th, 7 p.m., Mudge Auditorium at the region, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there.
The we sooner have, we get a quorum, the sooner right. we start. That's right. The sooner we have. Right. We have clickers again this year, so the meeting will move right along as smoothly as possible. And only 15 seconds to vote this year. <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> Next year it's 10. Right. <laughs> We're honing it. Right, right. Kate, so, thank you to Warren. I know that you're going to be working with us quite literally till the 11th hour on Sunday. We are. Yes. 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 Right. We are. And, times. and again, sharing the dais on Monday. I think we should all take a spin class at Community Spin <laughs> at 9. Great <laughs> idea. That's a great class. And then go to the down the hall at 10. That's a great idea. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. See? It's a competitive group of people. It's a competitive group. And it's a true community center. It is. That's right. Really well, is. thank you all for attending tonight and best wishes for the weekend and see you Monday night. Good night. Good night.